would we leave a legacy? Maybe we don't realize it, but this life that we live, it's not just about us in the moment. We need to seek God. In everything we do, we need to live for God. And we need to be concerned about leaving a legacy for the next generation. I've heard it said that faith is one generation from extinction if we don't begin to tell the praiseworthy deeds of our Father. It's our responsibility to not only tell, but we also have to show others by the way we live our lives and our willingness to help others. This race that we run will be our testimony of who God is. Part three, legacy. God, I need to leave a legacy. What decisions do I need to make? I need to trust you, God. I need to honor you, God. Because it's not just about me. I have to leave a legacy. It's so important that we share with our children what God is doing. Amen. Sometimes we keep those things separate. We want our kids just to be the kids. But when mom and dad are having to seek God for what's the next step that's affecting them, our children need to understand how we're seeking God. And, and young people, I need you to understand, I, I know sometimes, again, we put ourselves in categories, but you have the power to pray too. Some things you may see in your family, some things that you might see in your, in your parents, you may not understand, but you have the power to pray. Now, we already said in Scripture that the Bible says that you have to be obedient, you have to be respectful, you have to honor, but you can pray, right? So when those things that are happening that may want to put you in a position where you may feel like you want to be disrespectful or you may feel like you're not, you don't want to honor, pray. See God. You know, if, if mama is acting different this particular day, God, I don't know what she has going on. But Lord, please give her grace, give her patience, give her loving kindness. Speak those things that are not in the moment as though they were. And watch God change you. I want you all to begin to trust God, even in the state that you're in, that you don't have to wait till you get old because why would say that tomorrow is not promised, right? So seek God today. Pray, trust God, be a part. When we talk about the, the, the family ministry plan, though the husband, you know, maybe the mother in some cases may be the, the leader in that, everybody has a responsibility to play in it. Everybody does. So if, if there's a time that something comes up and, 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 and you feel like prayer needs to be done, don't you wait on the next person to pray? You pray. that I share with my son because I want him to understand what it is. I want him to, to feel my heart so he understands why I pushed him so hard. How this thing is, it's real. This is evident. Do you see the evidence of it? I want him to know that so that he says, okay, all right, I need to do something different. I need to make sure that I stay on this path. I, I can see that regardless of your age, if you give way to the temptation of the devil, he don't stop coming at you. You don't get to an age and say, oh, okay, well, she, you know, she's 53, so I'm going to her alone. No, he don't stop. He keeps coming, and that's why we have to make sure that we are constantly um, seeking after him. And that's why I tell, especially teenagers, Satan is going to be coming after you. Why? Because he don't want you to have a future. He don't want you to be blessed in what is to come. So if he can get in your mind and, and get you off track and, you know, with the wrong crowd and drugs and alcohol and all these other things, he wants to push you into that place because he don't want you to have a future. But he's a liar. You do have a future. Amen. And you're going to be taught and we are going to, we're going to give you the lessons and the tools that you need so that you can be successful in the life that God has planned. Amen. They said he alone knows the plan that he has for your life. He plans to prosper you. Amen. To give you the hope and the future that you deserve. Amen. Amen. And so we, we have to we have to definitely share those things with our, our children. And we have to share from generation to generation. Sometimes we have family secrets. Now I'm not trying to 
delve deep into that, but I'm saying there are sometimes stuff about uncle such and such or cousin such and such or just certain things that have been in our family history that we don't want to talk about. But we can't get deliverance from it if we don't talk about it. And see, that's the enemy. The enemy wants us to have secrets. He wants us to have, you know, the, the, the burden of shame and guilt and things that we hold on to. And that's the bondage. He wants to keep us in bondage. And God is just waiting. If you would let this go, don't want to talk about that. Because the sooner you talk about it and get it out there, now God can come in and heal it. But think about how many years we walk around holding shame, holding guilt, not actually talking about, you know, things that have happened, right? We don't want anybody to know this or know that. And God is saying, you know what? There is so much freedom and deliverance on the other side of this truth. But we're afraid of it. But just think about, you know, it may be something that you're dealing with that you're saying, like, ooh, if I just, ooh, and it'll be like a, a, a weight lift, ooh, with that, that's out the way, and God's saying, ooh, thank you, now I can go in and I can heal it. But he can't heal it as long as the lie is there. Amen. for us to continue in life to be in a remedial place. You remember when you were in uh, in school or if you, you know still being in school, either having you know to repeat a grade or having to take a remedial course because you didn't get everything that you needed to get. Sometimes we do that with our lessons in life and God has to take us right back to go over this lesson. He may he may completely change our city. He may completely change you know, the people we are around, but if we don't learn the lesson that God intended for us to learn, we're going to go right back through it. And so I always be like, God, please let me graduate. <laughs> please, can I, can I please graduate from this? Okay, so today was about legacy. children, but leaving them with maybe love, um, just to me, listening to some of the younger people tonight saying that they're striving to make sure they get to the point where they are building their legacy now for the future. I was so excited hearing one young lady say that, um, that it made me think at her age, I was not doing that. But now at my age now, preparing for retirement, I am trying to leave a legacy for my daughters and my grandchildren. <laughs> um, so it was just awesome learning that the little things we can do, striving to be like Christ, um, is awesome. So what I learned about leaving a legacy is that any child, any age can cry out to God and pray and he will answer you. And you have to remember that Satan, he does not want you to have a good life. So that's why you have to pray and ask God for help and he will answer you. I pray that excerpts of this message have been a blessing to you. We didn't expect for this lesson to take three sessions. But as I like to say, God gives the vision. The Holy Spirit provides the details. Please, if you feel this message would be a blessing to someone else, like it and share it as we want God's word to remain fresh and relevant in this season as he guides his people back to himself. Until the next time, be blessed.